Welcome back. When a child has a learning disability like dyslexia, ADD, or ADHD, or Asperger's, oftentimes it's mistaken for being lazy. If it's not identified and dealt with early, kids can oftentimes feel stupid and isolated. Pediatric emergency medicine physician Dr. Joan Shook and psychiatrist Dr. Jay Tarnow are still with us. All right. Learning difficulties, learning disabilities, all those types of things. It is so hard, especially in the early part, because uh, kids can get mislabeled. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, lazy or just not paying attention mm -hmm. is what kids yes. with ADD, mm -hmm. ADHD, and all that stuff. Right. You know this firsthand. You went through this I, as a kid. I have ADHD, and, um, and I must tell you that it created a lot of havoc in my life early on. Mm -hmm. I didn't read till I was in third grade because I couldn't do f uh, phonetics. I couldn't sound out words. Yeah. So eventually I just memorized all them and then I could read. Yeah. But the point is, is that every child has their capabilities. And again, the development is different for each child. Mm -hmm. So I always thought I was stupid. And then unfortunately it kept with me all over and over and over again until I realized that I had some special things that were very unique. The, I think what parents need to do is find that special thing and then support it. Yeah. So for me, yeah, it was athletics uh -huh. and playing sports, and as a result of it, that's where I got my confidence. Yeah, and I, I say to my son, you have to try your best. Mm -hmm. You try your best. Um, and so, uh, you know, there are several people we know that with learning disabilities, uh, Michael Phelps is ADHD, uh, Steven Spielberg, dyslexia, Henry Winkler, dyslexia, Cher, dyslexia, uh, Michael Dell, who, uh, you know, is from Houston, ended up uh, dropping out at UT. And it was interesting because he said, wait, wait I, I know you're teaching me this, but I have an idea. And they're like, well, no, that's not going to work. Or how many times mm -hmm. have we seen that? With, uh, because they think differently. Say, so think out of the box. Oftentimes, they never got in the box, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's how we saw you know, Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard, <laughs> right? Uh, but I want to impress upon the fact that these are real things. I know before I had my child, I thought, oh, is this part of this behavioral? But it's a real thing. It is so hard sometimes, and so hard as a parent not to just get so frustrated with that child. Well, there there are learning differences for sure, and, and Dr. Tarnow talked about some of them, and you have too, mm -hmm. but sometimes if they are not diagnosed or not dealt with or not right. talked about, then that will result in behaviors yeah. where the child's trying to get some mastery of his environment or trying to get attention in another way. There are lots of behaviors that evolve from... Right. Good um, and bad, because like you said, bad. you memorize words. Oh, That's what I You memorize things. Yes, but I also cursed at all my teachers oh. before I, I was able to read because... <laughs> I thought it was their fault yeah. <laughs> that I wasn't learning, <laughs> which was a very adaptive, mm -hmm. yeah. rather than some children which to shut down. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they start to avoid education and learning because it's so painful for them. Yeah. It's back to the school. The school has to be the place that supports them through this learning process. And the school has to understand is that their children who have different development and support each of the children differently yeah. Yeah. to get to the point of feeling good about themselves. That really is the key. Yeah, and, and to your point, there are certain laws in place, but a lot of parents don't know that, but that's kind of the importance of having the diagnosis, an official diagnosis from a doctor, mm -hmm. so that you can go back in and advocate for your yeah. child, yeah. right? Yes. The other thing I want to just bring up is that children with those learning differences frequently are singled out by their peers. Yeah. I like to say differences instead of disabilities, yeah. differences, yeah. It, 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 singled out by their peers as being different and sometimes that can result in bullying mm -hmm. so that's another reason why lots of conversations need to occur at home and with your health care providers to try and understand exactly what's going on I, in I the love the idea of teaching teachers how to mm -hmm. teach those children mm -hmm. you know rather yeah. than everything that depends on special education it's also possible to put it into the classroom right. and have different ways of learning if somebody would have said oh you can memorize the words yeah. You don't have to That's learn okay. by sounding it out. Yeah. If you that get 28 out of the 30 math problems right, chances are you might not have to show your work. <laughs> the chances are you understand what's going on, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I know when I started school in Taiwan, they separated us early on, the kids who seemed to have ADHD. And, uh, but I would stand up at a table, and every five minutes we'd, we'd move, we'd move, we'd move. So mm -hmm. we were moving around, and we were looking, and we had visual. We learned differently. Um, Kendra has a question. My oldest son is an overachiever in school. Mm -hmm. My youngest son is dyslexic and struggles with certain subjects. How can I praise my oldest without hurting my youngest uh, self-esteem? Each child is different, right? Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, the, each of those children have their attributes and their specialness. And that's what we have to do is praising what they have. Yeah. You they do that with your children because oh, there's a genetic component here. Ex exactly. With my children, they all have ADHD. <laughs> so it's much easier. But, the, but yet, 
Um, it's fascinating in my family because my oldest was incredibly productive, always moving, hyperactive, yeah. and always doing. She and I would have hung out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now she's an investment banker, mm -hmm. and that's great for her. But her sister, she was more sedentary and, and, um, and, and much more interested in play yeah. and being playful. She's an incredible mother. And she does, she's really one of the best mothers I've ever seen. Wow. Because she was playing being a mother. Yeah, her whole let me bring life. this up because this one is one that gets very controversial for a lot of folks as well uh, medication. Medication for kids who are ADHD mm. or ADD or whatever. And so medication has a role. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, you've prescribed, I remember the question you asked us was what is it you're seeking to do? What's the goal? Yeah, what's the goal? And um, it's not just any medication. Uh, my son was brain mapped by you. Yes. And that way you knew exactly where that, that ADHD was sitting in his brain. And the medication he's taking is not your typical ADHD medication. It made all the difference in the world because he's right. normal. It just took the static out of his head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a tendency in medicine um, to make a diagnosis and that everyone fits in that mm -hmm. category. And I think that's po probably one of the big problems we have with polypharmacy. Yeah. You know, with f the big pharma presenting diseases as if they're real things, yeah. right? And then this is the treatment. Yeah. And yet, with kill children with ADHD, there is a really wide continuum of different issues that look th like ADHD. Mm -hmm. Right. So the diagnosis doesn't tell us the etiology. It just tells us this child is having some difficulties managing themselves, yeah. and there may be multiple causes. But as you know, I don't believe in giving children medicine unless they're involved in some treatment. Yeah. They have to be involved in learning coping skills and ways to manage. Yeah. The only and you're purpose, not giving medicine to make them like just zombies in class, just right, right. sit and be no, quiet. No, the purpose they, of the medicine yeah. is to get them in the ball game so they can learn the coping skills to manage what they have. Yeah, okay. And we'll their differences. We'll be right back with some more questions after this.